The Koshlin Civic Unity Awards Program was created to honor Daniel Koshlin, a businessman and philanthropist who was an early champion of civil rights and strongly believed in the power of the individual. In the spirit of his life, the Koshlin Program recognizes Bay Area grassroots leaders, those who are bold and risky and accept the most stubborn neighborhood problems as a personal challenge and work collaboratively to overcome them. Each year, the Caution Program selects a Bay Area neighborhood to invest uh, resources and spend five years with that neighborhood. Over the past 30 years, we've selected 24 neighborhoods. And here are five amazing stories of five amazing neighborhoods and the work that they've done through the Caution Program. In the Canal neighborhood, Due to a large influx of immigrants arriving in that community, the fellows created the Canal Welcome Center. Ten years later, the Welcome Center is still helping local residents integrate into society and gives them a platform to launch their own community programs. <laughs> the Canal Welcome Center has become a place where people can find more than just services, but it's a center where we come together as a family. Over 70% of the people who live in the canal are Latinos. But we also had people from Vietnam, we had people from Russia, we had people from Haiti, and many other groups that live together in the same community. We have seen this today with the food pantry. That safe environment where people can nurture their leadership, where people can develop their own uh, skills and their own ideas. I mean, it's their community, are their needs. I can see the transformation. It is now a real welcome center. The programs created in Chinatown 16 years ago, from disaster preparedness booklets to a computer disability project for children, continues to have reach all the way to mainland China. Our community has always been a growing community. It's a very crowded community. It's a very densely populated community. And so what we always find is that uh, there's never enough uh, services. The group of us um, in Chinatown who were the awardees, many of the individuals I didn't know, actually, bringing us together as the Koshlin awardees really provided that opportunity um, for the first time to work together. We have been trying to provide services to Chinese families who have children with disabilities for the longest time. So what we did was to get volunteers, college students, to come and help us actually build some computers. These computers would be placed in the homes of children with disabilities, and the volunteers would sort of connect with these families as a mentor. Another one was we developed and published a bilingual disaster preparedness handbook and I believe we even sent some overseas to China. It was just a wonderful experience, and without the assistance from the Caution Program, we wouldn't have been able to do that. The aim of the North Fair Oaks Fellows was to engage existing organizations serving youth. The Fellows recently launched a youth initiative that is partnering with local residents and community-based organizations. North Fair Oaks, um, when I think of it, I think of pride, I think of festivals, I think of uh, children wanting to be doctors. I see an area that it's very rich, but an area that can improve. When we landed on this idea of the Youth Leadership Initiative, it was because as we went around the community, what we saw was that there was a bit of a gap with regards to leadership development. What is one thing that you would change in the North Fair Oaks community? The lack of for education that kids are missing. Okay. As we saw today in our um, first kickoff with our youth, they were very clear about some of the challenges. This is where Little Mex is. 
So this is a gang. That's they could very easily point out, here's the neighborhoods where the gangs are, and here's what they're called. This is their name. Yeah, they, they named them. And we need to do something about that. <laughs> that's where we are now, yes. Constantly. These youth are the seed of what's going to be a great awakening in North Fair Oaks. I mean, someone who's 14 years old giving their Saturdays to be at a community center, that's something to be amazed by. <laughs> In Ashland Cherylin, which is a traditional farming community in the East Bay, the Fellows Project addressed a community that lacked access to healthy food and had a high unemployment rate. We were wanting to have the greatest impact that we could have, um, not only in an individual's life, but in a family, in a neighborhood, in a community. Dig Deep Farms is a really good fit for our desire to tap into some of that because it creates jobs, it creates food, and, um, and it sort of beautifies the neighborhood. Feeding people, that's one of, the, one of the main joys I have. I mean, personally me, I like to see stuff growing out of the ground after I know it is with seeds. Uh, just a lot of personal gratitude with, with doing this work. We are a landing place for youth who are getting job experience and folks that are coming out of incarceration and need to, you know, get their feet on the ground again. And if it wasn't for the San Francisco Foundation Koshland program and all the training that we received, we would not be able to have Dig Deep Farms. There's a lot to overcome, but I am 100% confident that what we've done is going to exist for the long haul. One of the challenges the Iron Triangle faces is the amount of violence that happens in the community. And the project that the fellows wanted to um, produce was to show that people live here, that families live here, and they wanted them to tell their stories of how they came to that neighborhood and why they still live there. Altogether, there were more than 30 projects that we funded that came out of the Iron Triangle Legacy Project, and they ranged from artesanos, the workshop with elderly immigrants from Mexico and Latin America, telling their stories through ceramics, Go! to the sponsoring of neighborhood picnics that had everything from foot races to poetry about the origin and history of the park, to films about kids who had been murdered and sort of looking at them as uh, something more than a number. When we first started doing their door knocking, for me, People wouldn't answer the door because of the color of my skin. And by the time we were done, we were all like eaten together. After three years and being involved with the project, the Legacy Project, I'm still learning a lot about Richmond and like, I just become more attached to this community. Outside funds and outside resources are important. The most important thing about a neighborhood is the way that we conceive of ourselves, how we grasp where we've come from, how we envision where we are going. We can take the stories and the ideas that we have and really move them to define our future. <laughs>